on episode 470 of Nintendo Switchcraft Switch to have a very long lifespan. We've got a Kickstarter on on the way. It Switch loses an exclusive, but that's okay. And I complained for no reason at all as long as I live in Japan. Those stories and more on this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Hey, hey, this is Johnny Link from Rhode Island, and you're listening to Nintendo Switchcraft. Hey everyone, welcome back to Switchcraft. It is brought to you live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can tune in live over at my Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. On Saturdays, I record a show that is all about what you want me to talk about. Use the hashtag AskRJS on Twitter. We had a really good show on Saturday, and that's thanks to all of the questions and comments that people sent in using the AskRJS hashtag on Twitter. If you want to do that through the community discord you can do that to join the community discord with over a thousand other people by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash discord uh this episode of switchcraft is made possible by patrons like michael m get switchcraft and my other content ad free for as little as a dollar by heading on over to patreon.com slash run jump stomp all right we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about today Let's start by talking about Demon X Machina. All right, Demon X Machina, that is a game that came out. It was actually really, really interesting. There was, um, it was at E3 two years ago? Yeah, it was two years ago at E3. Um, you know, Nintendo opens up with their presentation at E3, and the first thing that they have is this weird mech game with some heavy metal music going. And a lot of us looked at that and said, oh, that looks really, really cool. Uh, the game is called Demon X Machina. And then they had a, a, uh, a trial, a demo that we could try out the first little bit of the game. And I tried it and I said, yikes, that game is a train wreck. It is not a game for me. I was not impressed. Well, um, the X seed games took all of that information that we, all of our complaints and they applied it. And then they brought out another demo, which was much improved from the first demo. A lot of people were very happy with the changes that were made to, um, demon X machina. And, uh, the, the game finally came out. Unfortunately, when it launched, it launched, among a bunch of other really, really big games. And that meant that it just didn't get the attention that I feel like it deserved. Um, so it didn't do as well as I think it should have, even though I'm one of the people who took a pass on it because it, it, it came out among a bunch of other games that I was much more interested in at the time. Now, uh, why am I talking about it again? Well, because Demon X Machina from uh, X Seed Games is now going to be launching globally on Windows PC via Steam on February 13th. So the game is no longer going to be a Nintendo Switch exclusive. exclusive. It is now coming to PC uh, through Steam. Uh, so you can get ready to pilot your arsenal and join the high stakes mech battle for humanity's survival. Uh, if you pre-purchase it today, you get 20% off and additional DLC. So just so everybody knows, how much does it cost? Well, I'm clicking right now to open it up in the Steam website. And currently, it is a $60 game and it is marked down to $47.99. That offer it ends in approximately uh, nine days, February 13th. So... If you want to get that 20% off, uh, that's what you're going to want to have to do right away. However, I say that, um, I don't know, try the demo. Download your or download the demo on your Nintendo Switch. See what you think of it before you spend that money. And then you can decide if you want to pick it up on Switch or if you want to pick it up on PC. Whatever it is that you decide, I'm sure will be fine with me. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to let people know about that. Now, uh, there was something that I did not add to the show notes. 
All right. There's something I forgot to add to the show notes, or actually I didn't add to the show notes. Well, I think I forgot. I, I was talking about it or thinking about it earlier today. And then as I was making the show notes, I completely forgot. And then one of our listeners, uh, Super Nintendad, who was here in chat, he's he, he was talking about it. And I was talking about Demon X Machina, and he was talking about the wonderful 101. And we were kind of going back and forth and we were I was confused about what he was talking about. He was like it's a stretch goal and I was like what do you mean? So, the Wonderful 101 remastered. If you don't know what the Wonderful 101 is, it is an incredibly weird game that came out on the Wii U. And actually, was it originally on the Wii U? I think it was. It may have been on the Wii as well, but I played it on the Wii U. Really, really strange game. There was a lot of drawing on the screen involved in order to put your characters uh, in the right formation. So you like you had 101 characters and you could turn them into a gun or you could turn them into, I don't know, like a sword or something like that or a fist, I mean. It's been a very, very long time since I played this game. Now, while I was making my show notes and getting ready to record, when I first started... The uh, this is a Kickstarter, by the way. Uh, the Kickstarter was at sixteen thousand. Uh, the goal was fifty thousand, and as of right now, as I'm recording this, it is now at seventy-two thousand. Uh, so people are have already blasted through the fifty thousand dollar goal, and that is to get the wonderful one hundred and one remastered. Uh, and I think that that's kind of cool, except I don't really get how how it makes sense for a, a company like Platinum Games to use Kickstarter in order to fund their game. I, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be allowed to, but in my mind, the way I look at Kickstarter is I look at Kickstarter to be like, this is the place where you go if you are a tiny, tiny little company and you need funding in order to make something that's never been made before. Uh, you know, Platinum Games is remastering a game that they've already made. And I'm not saying that that's not hard to do. I'm not saying that that doesn't cost money to to do. But they have like money from the other games that they're making. I believe that they just had a big influx of money from an investor. I could be wrong. And I wasn't going to talk about this, and which is why I didn't look it up ahead of time. But I think that they just got some money from Tencent. I'm not positive. Let me Google that right now. Ten cent and platinum games. All right, we'll see if anything comes up. Uh, yeah, look at this. Bayonetta developer Platinum Games teams up with Chinese giant Ten Cent. So Ten Cent, Ten Cent just put a bunch of money into Platinum Games. So why is it that Platinum Games is now doing this? Um, oh gosh, what's it called? This Kickstarter in order to raise money to make this game when they just got a bunch of money from Tencent. I don't know, it just seems kind of, I don't know, not cool. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. Obviously, there's a lot of people who are excited about this. It's a $50,000 goal. And in the time that I've been talking about this, it's went from 70000 to 80000 So it is raising really, really fast. They've got 31 days to go. There's a bunch of stretch goals about bringing it to different platforms as well. If you are interested in the Wonderful 101 and you want to know what does it look like, what kind of game is it, then uh, it's so weird. I'm trying to find some footage of the game. There we go. Uh, it's such a weird game. You're controlling all of these characters, and it's a very button mashy game, but then you you turn these characters into larger objects by drawing on the screen. Now, I don't think that that's going to work on the Switch, unless you are drawing on the screen or unless they come up with a new way to actually control the game. And I think that if they're going to be bringing this to the PlayStation, to PC, to, um, you know, Xbox, then it's going to have to be figured out how you can do this completely different than the original controls because the original controls are are very, rem very, very dependent on how unique the... Um, the the Wii U was. Now, I, I, I 
I don't like to toot my own horn, but I want to say that I did call that we would get a wonderful 101 recently. So, you know, yay me for, for calling it. But, um, oh my God, it's the, the numbers are going up so fast. It's at 88,000 right now. Uh, so there's a lot of people that are very, very excited about this game. We'll see what happens with it. And I will let you know, uh, more information probably when we find out more, um, they have until March 6th to uh, hit this goal. So if you guys are interested in it, uh, I, I'm going to try to remember to put this in the show notes. It's not already in the show notes, and for that I apologize. Uh, I will try and remember to put this in the show notes after the fact. Maybe somebody in chat can remind me. All right, let's talk about Mr. Furu. Actually, let's not talk about Mr. Furukawa. We're going to talk about Mr. Furukawa in a minute. But first, I want to hear from a sponsor. After we hear from our sponsor, we're going to see what Mr. Furukawa, the president of Nintendo, has to say about the expected life cycle of the Nintendo Switch. Stick around. Introducing the next generation from Nintendo, New Super Mario World, created especially for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic, a bit more levels, a bit more secrets, a bit more enemies, a bit more friends, a bit more sound, a bit hotter, a bit cooler, a bit weird, a bit more revolutionary, a bit more Mario, a bit more of what you want. It's 16-bit. And it's yours only if you get new Super Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, superpower. All right, we are back. Mr. Furukawa uh, recently was talking, and this comes to us from videogameschronicle.com. And it says here, this is going to shock you. Are you guys ready to be shocked? I hope you're ready to be shocked. Uh, here's the shocking part. Nintendo is considering its approach to future console development. Really? What a shock. Uh, that, that banner headline really jumped out at me, that they're considering their future plans for console development. I mean, who would have thought that a video game console uh, maker and platform holder would be thinking about what they might do in the future? That being said, um, ridiculous headlines aside, uh, there was this uh, Japanese Q&A with investors. It was uh, translated by Video Games Chronicle, so thank you to them for translating it. And there's some very interesting information here. It says here, uh, the Nintendo Switch will soon have been on sale for three years. We feel it's a different kind of console than the ones we have previously released. Excuse me. In addition to the flagship Switch model, we also released a Nintendo Switch Lite, which can only be played as a handheld. This allows the user to choose a console that fits their lifestyle. And I think that that really is, is a fantastic way to do things, to create uh, multiple versions of the same console and be able to um, let me decide a how much money I want to spend and b what features are important to me. So you know I've got the regular switch here in my hand. This is mine. This is my regular switch. And then in my in my hand now I have the switch light. This one belongs to my wife. And I think that at the end of the day. Uh, having these two options is a very, very good thing for Nintendo. It allows uh, uh, the consumer to decide $200 or $300. More consumer choice is always a better thing. This is another reason why, or this is this is the same reason why uh, 32 gigabytes for internal storage is okay, but because it allows Nintendo to sell it at $300 and then allow me the end user to decide how much money do I want to invest in my particular switch by adding an SD card of whatever size that I'm looking for. So I think that's great. This also why I think it would be really good for a Switch Pro to come out. We know that's supposed to not be happening this year, the Switch Pro, um, but I do think a Switch Pro that costs a little bit more money has a smaller bezel uh, maybe a longer battery life or maybe a higher resolution screen. All of those things would be really, really good. And I think at the end of the day that that's something that we're going to need to do. He goes on to say, we are also looking into the current market and feel there are many different ways to think about future console development. 
On the other hand, software is also very important. So in the short term, while the Nintendo Switch in ball install base continues to expand, we must place a lot of focus on that. By placing our main focus on the Nintendo Switch, we feel we can have a very different slash longer hardware life cycle than previous Nintendo consoles. And I think that's great. Look, Nintendo knows that right now they are not directly competing with the Xbox and the PlayStation. I think most houses and I'm saying most, not all, but most houses that have a Nintendo Switch, they either have a Nintendo Switch and a PlayStation, a Nintendo Switch and an Xbox, or a Nintendo Switch and a PC. I think that that's really the case. That's kind of the case when, when it happened with the Wii as well. So I feel like Nintendo understands that, and they know that they don't have to directly compete with those other systems, which is why they, as long as the PlayStation doesn't bring out a portable and the Xbox doesn't bring out a portable. I think Nintendo is in a really, really good place right now. Um, so I thought that those um, statements were very interesting. Now, in the middle of that conversation that I was just having with you, dear, dear listener, uh, I just got a phone call and two texts. So I'm going to wrap up the show really, really fast and get out of here um, because clearly something's going on. So Let's go fast for the rest of this. All right, we already covered Wonderful 101 Remastered. All right, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Recently, I complained that at the Animal Crossing New Horizons Joy-Con and Switch dock, you know, that I didn't think that Nintendo would give us a way to buy them separately. Well, according to Nintendo Life, and actually I found this out after I had posted that, um, in Japan, you can. You can buy the dock separately. You can buy the Joy-Cons separately if you want. And I think that that is awesome. Now, it's only in Japan. And we don't know if it's coming to the West, but I, I hope that it is. Do I think that I personally will um, spend money on these things? Probably not. Maybe the Joy-Cons, probably not the dock. I already have a bunch of docks throughout the house. Um but I know that there's a lot of people that would want this stuff and don't want to upgrade or go through the the hassle of upgrading their Nintendo Switch. So it makes sense to bring this stuff out separately. I think Nintendo should have done that a while ago with the... They had uh, Joy-Cons that came with a Mario... I think it was Mario Kart? Or maybe it was Mario Odyssey. Uh, there was a bundle and it came with like these bright red Joy-Cons. Not the neon red... Uh, but a different red Joy-Con, and it looked really cool, and they didn't sell those separately for some reason, and I thought that that was a mistake. All right, last story before I wrap up the show. Speaking of Animal Crossing, um, there's a lot of people out there who are very unhappy because Animal Crossing just made an announcement that you can only have one island per account, okay? Okay. Actually, that's not right. It's one island per Nintendo Switch console. So it doesn't matter how many accounts you have on the Switch. If me and my wife and my son and my daughter and my niece were all on my Nintendo Switch and I have Animal Crossing on here, then we, the five of us, will share that island with each other. And there's a bunch of people who were just assuming that because we have the different user accounts on the Switch, that meant that, you know, this person would have their own island and this person would have their own island. And I can understand why people would want that big time. Like, I would like to be able to have my own island that nobody else can mess with. Nobody else can decide where something goes. I get to decide that. That I understand. But I also understand how it could be cool to share an island as a family and kind of work together to, to figure out what you're going to do on that island, and everybody still has their own house, I think that that would be really cool. I do think it would be very cool if Nintendo gave us the option to decide if, if I want to have a, an island as a family or an island on my own. But at the end of the day, Nintendo does the same thing that Nintendo always does. They they decide for you what is the best way to do something, you know, and, and sometimes that's very frustrating, but also sometimes they're right. 
Sometimes they're wrong, though. You know, like you you play a game and you can't turn off the in-game music, which is fine if it's great music, and most of the time it is, but sometimes I get sick of that same music over and over and over. That drives me crazy about Nintendo. They've decided how you're going to play, and there's no two ways about it. They decide which buttons go in which spots, which button is the jump button, which button is the attack button, and you can't remap. I don't like it when they do that kind of thing either. And for this, I agree. I wish that it would they would give us the option. However, maybe there's a technical reason why they can't. I doubt that that's the reason. But uh, if you're sharing your Switch with other people in your household, then guess what? You're going to be sharing your island with other people in your household. And that may or may not be okay, especially if you have a single Switch household and you have young kids who would look at Animal Crossing and be like, that's really cool. Now you're going to have like, uh, you know, the the five-year-old's going to come in and knock down all of the stuff or put stuff in the place that you don't want that doesn't make sense. So I can understand why we might want to have this stuff separately. But that's kind of the way Animal Crossing has always been. All right. The mailing list is growing really, really quickly. Thank you very much. If you don't know what I'm talking about, join the free video game newsletter every couple of days. I find some cool gaming-related news, plus I put my thoughts together with it and a bunch of gifts, and I send it directly to your inbox. Go to runjumpstomp.com slash mail and sign up today. Uh, it's free, and it's uh, some funny stuff, I think, that we've been seeing in there. I love fu- finding the perfect gif, and that's something that I tend to not be able to do in an audio podcast. So please do me a favor and check that out. Again, that's runjumpstomp.com slash mail to sign up. You can become a part of the community over at runjumpstomp.com slash discord. You can also watch the show live at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. You can get a hold of me at uh, runjumpstomp on Twitter. Use that hashtag askrjs. That's A-S-K-R-J-S. And maybe you'll get onto the Saturday show. This show is part of the giant-sized team-up network. For more information, make sure you check out gstu.net. And if you are looking for ways to support the show, go to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. And for more content like this, check out my other shows like 143 Pixels, Stadia Cast, or Run Jump Stomp by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash shows. The music that you're hearing right now is Corneria, Star Fox Remixed by Noteblock. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.